Hey Ubers, I wanted to share with you an artist trading block I recently crafted for the Sizzix Challenge. The Sizzix Challenge is going on through the end of September 2014. I hope you'll play along. You could win an Eclipse 2 machine, electronic die cutting machine. So I hope you'll play along. There's an inspiration photo. I'll provide the link for you in the description box below in YouTube. But as you can see here, I had some fun playing with my mists, and I wanted to share with you a short tutorial on how I created these effects on my die cuts. I'm going to be using several products from a new line that we have with Sizzix and Echo Park. This is a Biggs die, number 659737, flower number 3. It has some beautiful shapes in it. You can layer each of the die cuts show you in a second. And this is number 659743 and it's card A2 with window. And I'll show you some really exciting things about that. As for media, I'm going to be using Clear Snap, uh, Color Box Spritzers, and Smooch Spritz. So as you know with the big dies, they cut through just about everything. They're really sturdy. They're my favorites. And you layer that between two acrylic plates and you put your cardstock in there as well. I'm using Coordination's um, extra thick smooth cardstock, 110 pound cardstock, which I found works really well with all the media that I like to use. Let me show you what these die cuts look like. So you can layer the blossoms if you want, or you don't have to, but just look at how beautiful they look. Simply die cut from white cardstock. That just by itself is just really pretty and could make for another beautiful project. Those shapes are wonderful and, I think, um, classic. There's also a central circular piece that I will be using. I'm also going to be using a sizzlet from a set that I used for my artist trading block. This is the Floral Botanical set with three dies, number 657095. And I'm going to be using the Vines and Leaf number two Sizzlet die that comes in the set of three. So you can see, you can see that flourish. These are other thing, dies that come. Uh, leaves, a blossom, another leaf, and a flourish. I really love that flourish. And I love how it took the media that I used on my artist trading block. I'm going to use it again for this card project today. With the um, more detailed die cuts, sometimes uh, we use the Sizzlitz dies or the wafer thin dies. Um, they capture some of the more intricate details. And any of you die cutting enthusiasts will know that with the finer, uh, more detailed die cuts, um, sometimes it's just a good measure to send it through the die cut machine um, two, three times. And here are the shapes that come out of that. So I'd like to call this technique dowsing. Uh, we're working with a really very wet surface. I just misted my pieces pretty strongly with water and by having a very wet surface, um, any misting that goes on top, I mean, it's, it's, there's a puddle in there. Any misting that goes on top um, spreads out in really neat ways. You could leave it like that, which is very cool, or spritz some more to dilute um, or get rid of any um, lines or shapes. So you can see how that's just a very soft color and it's very dilute. Um, once it starts to dry and it's still damp, um, you could add more pigment on top of that. Um, this is the pumpkin pie color box spritzer from Clear Snap. And I'm tapping some color on here. I think with these uh, detailed curls, um, it's nice to have a more intense pigment, especially if you're going to have a contrast against a very white background, which is what I'm going to have for my card project. So for this last piece, it, you can see the water is puddled on the surface of my die cut. I think it's very important for this technique 
to cut your pieces prior to applying the media. Um, because as it dries, um, the media interacts with the edges, the edges of your die cuts in really interesting ways. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm just going to leave that there to dry. Um, it does take quite a while. You can go have a meal and then come back and it'll all be ready for you. Um, but I would shy away from using a strong heat tool because it will mess with the flow of um, watered down pigment that you've put onto your die cut. So on those smaller uh, starry shapes on the left, I used uh, more of the pumpkin pie and also some gold glow, which adds a really nice dose of shimmer. And then I used um, frosted plum and um, mermaid from uh, the new release from Clear Snap Color Box Spritzers. If you find the shade is a little too faint for your liking, um, while it's still damp, um, so these orange pieces on the right, um, they're still damp. Um, I'm just adding pure color and I'm not going to dilute it with any water. You can also use a foam brush or a paint brush to apply the color. I think as long as your surface is damp, uh, prior to applying the, the pigment from the mists, you will end up with a soft result. Um, it's a very different effect than when you spritz on a very dry surface. And these days I'm, I tend to prefer the way this looks. So I'm going to set those pieces aside to dry. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to cut out the card base. This is the Sizzik Echo Park uh, number 659743 card A2 with window die. It also cuts a banner piece. I think this die is unique because it cuts out your card very efficiently. Um, it cuts out your card base, it gives you a framing element in one pass, and it also gives you a banner piece if you're interested in using one. I'm going to be doing some dry embossing as well today. This is um, a set of embossing folders from Sizzix and Echo Park. It's number 659. 745. It's got a very cool hound's tooth, but I'm going to be using the dots. Um, and I'm going to use a piece of white cardstock that's just about a quarter inch smaller than my card front and um, dry emboss that. I've got it open to tab one, and I'm going to place my cardstock inside the embossing folder and sandwich that between two acrylic plates and send it through the big shot. This Xyron X sticker machine came in very handy when um, trying to adhere these delicate um, flourish shapes. You just send it through the top and it comes out the bottom and then you rub in the adhesive, pull it off, and apply your die cut to your project. So here you can see how this die, this card die creates a really pretty framing element for you. I utilized that but kept it really soft by using white on white and um, putting an embossed cardstock piece behind. And here you can see the pretty colors and patterns that were created by dowsing our surface with mist and water. It's so heavily doused that actually some of the pigment goes through towards the back. So you might want to check the backs of your die cuts as well after doing all of this because you might have some really pretty patterns that um, turn up on the back side. I actually use the back side for the largest floral die cut. And here's the final card. I added some gems from Recollections and a small sentiment. Um, I also added a tiny bit of glossy accents to that central blue dot. 
you can see how the stronger hues of the flourish contrast nicely against the white background and really showcase the beautiful curves of those um, sizzlet flourishes. You can find a detailed supply list in the description box below and more information on the Sizzix blog. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.